Christmas stories. Because you see, it's all about this base, about this base. Nobody's healed. This hospital's a waste of space, worse than the battlefield. It's all about this nurse, made it less worse, so we all hail the lady with the lamp. Me, Florence Nightingale. Don't like red painted walls. That's blood, Mom. Ooh, uh, probably doesn't help. You've built this on a sewer. Those rations good at killing Amen in Crimea, but not half as good as this place. Central Station Diarrhea. First I brought in some towels, so when emptying their bowels, then at least their bodies were clean. Here's some fun. Help them get off their backs, offering tasty fresh snacks in the hospital canteen. Yummy, yummy. Take one look at the squalor and cases of corner, the sores and dysentery. Holy time. And then here's the surprise for the stolen supplies back with my own money. Because you see, it's all about this base, about this base. Don't get annoyed. I'll get a brand new pillowcase, clear all trace of typhoid. It's all about this nurse, fortunes reverse. At the double, helping soldiers feel less worse. Don't need a hearse. No trouble. Took my light round at night, check the men were. Ask this gentleman. I'm Amelia Earhart, and I was the second person of either sex to fly across the Atlantic solo. Help! He's a lady! I broke records, flew dangerous missions, and won the U.S. Distinguished Flying Cross. Good for you. I'm too clever. While clever ladies like Miss Amelia Earhart may fly airplanes, if their husbands allow them, it is unladylike to fly airplanes during a war. The traumas will be too much for your fragile minds to take. Don't take my word for it. Ask these brave gentlemen of the RAF. I'm Pauline Gower, and I created the women's section of the ATA, the Air Transport Auxiliary. Heavens, all the men are all ladies. <laughs> my moustache has fallen off in shock. We were known as the Atta Girls, and not only did we fly the planes, we also flew broken ones, which was much more dangerous. Does anyone have any smelling salts? I'm feeling a little. I'm Joey Lofthouse. And we flew everything from Spitfires to long range bombers. All right. All right, I'm all right. Even in the 1940s, we were paid the same as men. It's the same. It was the first time the British government agreed equal pay for equal work. Listen, ladies, this is ridiculous. You just can't. Curlings. Ah, we mean. Big one. Idiots like me. Well, say you can't do things just because you're female. Don't listen. Very good. <sighs> Stay on the bus. They stayed off the 
Enforce new legislation. Dream of the day the USA had no implementation of S E G R E G A T I O N. Spell segregation. From that day on, we walked or cab led by Martin Luther King. Attacked by mobs, our houses bombed, though peace was our thing. hero Joan of Arc on board. I'm just a huge fan of your work and um, I want to do your story justice. Merci. So this is the scene where you see the English and you're just going to slay him with a killer line. Now I want it to be authentic, I want it to come from you, but if it could be something that's like really blockbustery, that'd be great. Loving it, Joni. Good luck. Action! Here comes the English man. I will do them very great and drive them out of all France, body for body. <laughs> you witch? That was magic. Um, I'm just thinking, would you be more likely to say something like, I'm going to kick these Brits right up the English channel? No? OK, well, you're the Joan of Arc. Moving on. Next scene. OK, cue Joni. And action. Oh, oh right now. Dear the English, I should send you my letter more decently, but you detain my arms. Cut. Lovely stuff, Joni. And um, what if it said, here's one in the eye for you, then we cut to you and you give a cheeky wink to camera. Ooh. No, so she doesn't like that. OK. Oh, you have a message. Don't call me Joni. Got it. You're the hero. Loving your work, Joni. Joan! Joan and Mark. OK, next scene. Places, people, and action! It is over. I have been caught by the Burgundians. I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> No, no, I'm not saying, ooh, sounds painful after caught by the Burgundians. <coughs> OK. You're right. You're a star. You're a real star. Me near Mary C. Court, fair mass nurse, to the Crimean boys. No, me not Florence Nightingale, that makes up me a noise. Me learn me skills in a Jamaica, where me mother nurse this sick. I think it my destiny child to be a war magic If you're coughing then you should have a drink with it If your diet's poor you should really think on it If it's cholera rehydration's best for it If it's fever better take some rest for it Whoa oh oh whoa oh oh whoa oh 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 Mystery still says me name call me not one to mourn Me ask me friend come and stay for help and set off British Hotel. Me boarding house became the aunt of the great and good. Though it wasn't glamorous, it was built to old bits of wood. Supplied the troops with kit and clothes, support the rich and poor. Me nurse right on the battlefield while Florence worked far from the war. I'm a nursing lady, put a splint on it. Me see a wounded man, better sprint to it. Earned fame from the war, I'm a stint in it. But the crime, it shame is me. 
never ever die despite the work me do bankruptcy was my i'm a fierce lady never faced by it both a book and earn funds raised by it me all tell men all their lives to it going down in history that's me prize for it throughout history there have been times when individual people made a huge difference to society. From Nelson Mandela helping end apartheid, to William Wilberforce campaigning against slavery, to Gandhi peacefully fighting for Indian independence. And in 1918, we suffragettes had our success too, when the first British women were finally allowed to vote. Hurrah! And you again! It wasn't me. And we suffragettes weren't the only women who played their part in the history of protest. Take it away, ladies. to put a man on the moon. You need a computer that can do high-speed, complex calculations and precise rocket trajectories. You need the latest technology from NASA. Just ask the experts. Hi, Buzz Aldrin, astronaut. We rocket jockeys don't know much about computers, but this is one computer I trust. And I know the future when I see it. The future of computers is now. The future. I, Katherine Johnson. Welcome to me, Katherine Johnson, NASA computer. Tell Buzz if he uses these settings, he's gonna hit the sun. Sorry, where do I plug in the keyboard? Well, I'm not that kind of computer. Computer is my job title. Oh, so you don't work out complex algorithms and baffling calculations at super high speeds? Well, I guess I am that kind of computer. Great, so where do I plug in the keyboard? The I, Katherine Johnson, putting the person in personal computing. Don't you even think about it. The queen of jazz, they went crazy for me. Back in the 20s, they loved my new dance. From Harlem to the toast of all Perry, I made the charts and the big hit in France. Hung out with him in way. And Picasso. Star of Sean's Elysee. Military intelligence. Charmed my way to enemy embassies. Share my finest through correspondence. Wrote secret notes for spies. Oh, we got to hold the resistance guys. In her shadow. Cause anybody can just talk the talk. You need a war hero to blow your mind. Dance, dance back in the States.
Top tips for working at the BBC. Number 213, Verity Lambert. Hello, I'm Verity Lambert. I was the first female TV drama producer at the BBC. My top tip is, if you want to make your history show for children popular, then add a few bug eye monsters. Even when they tell you not to, which is what they told me. The programme I was making was Doctor Who, and it was meant to be an educational show about science and history with no bug-eyed monsters. I introduced the Daleks and the whole thing took off. So, if you have a history show for children, my tip is get yourself a bug-eyed monster. And now on Horrible Histories, it's time for the next sketch. It's a bit much. <laughs> Hello. I'm Mary Shelley, and I wrote the famous book Frankenstein about a scientist who made a monster. These are some of the um, actual reviews that came out around the time that I wrote the book. I hope they don't use the word genius too much. <laughs> OK, so Frankenstein was horrible and disgusting. OK, well, I guess there's always one. Gross inconsistencies. I suppose there's always two. Taste and judgment revolt at this kind of writing. Oh, well, th th this one's just a list of insults. Plum, massive turnip, milk. Oh, no, 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 sorry, that's uh, my shopping list. Oh, no, no, here's a good one. Uh, the ideas of the author are clearly expressed and his landscapes have in them... It his. Why do they think Frankenstein was written by a man? Uh, I mean, I suppose I should be grateful that they're not having a go at me for being a female writer. The writer is a female. We shall therefore dismiss the novel without further comment. I, I knew this was a bad idea. You know, you know what you can do with your reviews? I um, forgot my shopping lists. Welcome to Time Waves with Judge Rin. Rachel Carson, marine biologist and conservationist from the 20th century, helped kick off the environmental movement. She wants fewer chemicals used in farming because she says they kill insects and damage nature. The defendants, representatives from the US chemical industry, want her to stop being a pest. Ah, Miss Carson. Now, as I understand it, in addition to being a marvellous environmental campaigner, you're also a very famous author. Isn't that right? <laughs> yes, that's right. Now, I believe that farmers should work with nature and not against it. Chemicals and pesticides pushed by these companies may kill pests, but they also kill beneficial insects. Good riddance. <coughs> Shh! Talking! Do carry on. I have been the subject of many attacks in the press. A communist! Like that. One letter published in the New York Times even said that we can manage perfectly well without animals and birds. My ideas are all explained in my best-selling book, Silent Spring, available now. You should have stayed a bit more silent if you asked me. Excuse me, this is my corporate. You understand chemical formulas, don't you? Yes. Right, well, here's one for you. One part me talking equals one part you shutting up. Understood? Now, I'm willing to listen to any reasonable arguments. Your Honor, we have written our own version of the first chapter of her book. It's called The Desolate Year. Imagine a world without pesticides. You open your front door. Bugs. You get in your car. Bugs. You go for a picnic in the countryside. Bugs. There are meant to be bugs in the countryside. Oh, I wish there were bugs in bookshops so they ate your book. Oh, well, it wouldn't take long to do Well, you guys are certainly bugging me. Miss Carson, I shall stop them immediately. Thank you. Well, it's a win for the bugs. Bugs one, progress zero. 